Reverend Jake Zabe, and welcome to Children's Bible Stories. Okay, children, we're going to continue on our Bible stories with the story of Noah's Ark. In this Bible story, we're going to be talking about how Noah and his sons got all the animals onto the ark. Now, God told Noah that he had to take onto the ark with him two of every kind of animal, a boy and a girl, so that they could breed and keep having babies and so they wouldn't die off. Now some of the animals, like the clean animals and some of the birds, God told them to take either seven pairs or just seven animals all up. It depends on the Hebrew translation. But either seven or fourteen of some of the animals got to go on. But mostly, God told Noah that he and his sons had to take on the ark two of every animal. Now, we don't know exactly how Noah got all these animals to go on the ark. Some people think that Noah and his sons may have gone out and actually collected all the animals. As we mentioned in the previous video, God gave Noah 120 years before the flood came. So Noah had 120 years to build the ark. So he very easily could have spent that time also going around and collecting all the animals to bring with him. But... There is also some people think that maybe God just sent the animals to come to Noah. Now the Bible doesn't actually say. All the Bible says is that Noah was to take these animals onto the ark. And when we get to the actual story of the Bible, when it comes time to go onto the ark, it says that Noah and the animals entered the ark. So maybe Noah had to chase the animals onto the ark. He had to round them up and chase them on up, get those big elephants up onto the ark. Or maybe they just followed him up onto the ark. We don't know exactly. But the important thing that we do know is that Noah and his wife and his three sons and their three wives went onto the ark and all the animals went on with them. Oh no. <laughs> Silly towels. So, they went onto the ark. And then, as the Bible says, as they went into the ark, God came down and he closed the door behind them, sealing the ark up so that it was waterproof. And the Bible tells us that in the 600th year of Noah's life, so when Noah was 600 years old, in the second month, on the 17th day, that's when God sent the flood. The fountains of the deep burst open and the windows of heaven were open. So that means we had water not only falling from the sky and raining down from the sky, but the waters of the deep also burst open. So we had some underground geysers that also would have burst up and sprayed water up into the air. See, if you had something like this going on, it was probably very chaotic and wild because many creation scientists believe that it was actually Noah's flood that separated the landmass, that before Noah's flood, there was one single continent. And that after Noah's flood, we have all the continents and countries that we do now. So, if that's the case, that means all the tectonic plates would have been moving around. And not only water being sprayed into the air, but there would have been lava and volcanoes erupting and big earthquakes and big thunderstorms. And it would have been a crazy storm. But the boat was kept safe because God remembered Noah. The rain came down from the sky and the water burst up from under the ground and there was big storms and it was crazy and chaotic and all the living things on the earth died. All the animals died and all the people died. They were all killed in the flood because of their naughty sinfulness. 
But God remembered the ark, and he remembered Noah and the animals on the ark, and God kept them safe. And so we're going to end our video there today, children. If you join us again for our next video, we're going to talk more about the flood itself and about the end of the flood and what happened after the rain stopped and the flood waters recited. I've been your host, Reverend Jake Zabel. Goodbye and God bless.